So we're going to begin talking about finding derivatives of inverses. Before we do, I want to do a quick review of inverses, and then on the next video that you watch, you'll watch on the um, finding of derivatives of an inverse. So um, we talked a little bit about this in class. You've seen this before, but remember that f of f inverse of x undoes the, so the inside function, if it's inverse, the outside function of the original function undoes it, and we get x back. And if we put our inside function of f of x inside of our inverse function, f negative 1, once again they cancel our, each other out or undo one another and we get x back. A um, couple things to remember about inverses is, other than the fact that they undo one another, is that the graph of f of x and the graph of f inverse of x are reflections of one another across the line y equals x. Remember the line y equals x is just a straight linear line with a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. The domain of my function is the range of my inverse function. The range of my function is the domain of my inverse function. Another way of saying that is that if the point x, y is on the graph of f of x, then the point y, x is on the graph f inverse of x. So it's almost like the point flip-flops. Next thing I want to do is I want to do a review example of finding an inverse. So suppose we know that f of x is 3x cubed minus 1. Could you find f inverse of x? So f inverse of x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my function with y in place of f of x, and then I'm going to flip my x and my y around. Since domain and ranges flip x and y, or excuse me, inverses flip x's and y's around anyway. Giving me x equals 3y cubed minus 1. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solve this for y. Solving for y, I could add 1 and divide by 3. And I'm running out of room, so I'm going to kind of flop back over here, so I know that's kind of confusing. Um, then I have x plus 1 over 3 equals y cubed. My cube is a little big, so that is supposed to be an exponent. To get rid of that cube, I can take the cube root, and I have the cube root of x plus 1 over 3 equals y, and then the last thing to do is just rewrite y as f inverse of x. So the cube root of x plus 1 all over 3 equals f inverse of x. I have a bad habit of getting used to writing um, the prime sign, so I always will tend to write prime and then have to go back and go, oh, I mean inverse, so um, I'll be able to try my best not to do that in here. Uh, and then on the other thing I wanted to look at is an example of what about if I know what my function is, how could I find the value of my inverse? So I'm going to show you two separate ways. So the first way I can do it is I can say, well, what if I just find my inverse function? Similar to the above example, well, then couldn't I just plug 4 into my inverse function? And the answer is yes. So I can say that y equals the square root of x minus 4. Flopping x and y around, I then have x equals the square root of y minus 4. Solving for y, I can square both sides. And then adding 4 to each side, I end up with x squared plus 4 equals y, which means x squared plus 4 equals my f inverse of x. So if I plug 4 in for x, I end up with 4 squared plus 4 equals 16 plus 4 equals 20. So f inverse of 4 should be 20. That's one method for doing it. Um, the only problem I see with that method is sometimes it's actually really hard to rearrange a function to find the inverse. So another way you can do it if you don't want to have to try to find the inverse first is you can say, well, if my function f of x has the point a comma b, then my inverse function f inverse of x has the point b comma a. And since I'm trying to figure out what is my f inverse of x, uh, my f inverse when I plug 4 in for x, I'm essentially saying, looking at my f inverse here, when my first value, my x value is 4, what's my a value? Well, in terms of my original function, I'm saying that then what's the a when y is 4? Well, could I solve this function to figure out what x value? makes my y value 4? You bet. So when does the square root of x minus 4 equal 4? Well, I'll square both sides and get 16 equals x minus 4. Add 4 to each side and I get x equals 
20. So when does f inverse of x equal 4? When x is 20, because if my original function has, a y, um, has an x value of 20, then my inverse has a y value of 20. So those are the two ways to go about it. The other reason why this way is so convenient is because I'm going to show you a method in class or to a way to use your graphing calculators in class so that you don't even have to solve these problems. Your calculator will just solve them for you. So that's a brief overview of inverses. And so now on the next video, we'll look at actually finding derivatives of inverses.